Okay, so let's start our first picot. This is probably one of the easier ones because you don't have to work back into any of your chains as you do in um, some of them. Okay, so I've got my slip knot on my hook and I'm going to go straight into my first stitch and make a single crochet. I'm not going to join my yarn, I'm not going to do a chain one and then single crochet, just straight in with a single crochet. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do a slip stitch and then chain five. And back into the same stitch that I slip stitched in and do a second slip stitch. Not into that same slip stitch, but into the same stitch on your, um, your main work, okay? So there is our first little pico. Okay, so we'll do the next one. So we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and then a slip stitch in the next stitch or in my case it's a chain space because this is a granny stitch although I've got four stitches in my clusters um, and my shells rather than three. Okay, so single crochet and then a slip stitch. Chain five and a slip stitch back in the same stitch or space. Okay, single crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch or space, chain five, slip stitch back into the same stitch. And then if you were finishing off, you would do one last single crochet. If you were doing it in a row, if you were doing it in a round and going, <coughs> excuse me, going all the way around, you would do your last slip stitch and then you would slip stitch into your first single crochet or you could do the invisible join. Okay, so in a row, you started with a single crochet and you finish with a single crochet. In the round, do your last slip stitch and then slip stitch into your first single crochet. Okay, so this is how they look pico with a single crochet in between each one. And there we go, let's see if I can get the camera to focus. And there we go. Okay, now you can um, vary these up, you can make them taller or shorter, you could, um, you need to use odd amounts, ideally, of chains. So three, five, seven, um, nine would be rather tall, a bit like petals, um, but you need odd amounts um, of stitches to make it curve nicely. If you had even amounts, it wouldn't curve as nicely. Okay, so that's the first pico. Okay, for our second pico, we are going to do a single crochet in the next stitch, and then we're going to chain three. And then we're going to do a slip stitch into the first chain that we made. So just sort of come back here and go into that first chain that you made. And do a slip stitch. Okay, and then do a single crochet in the next stitch or chain. And then... I would put another single crochet, put at least two single crochets in between. And this is how this pico looks. It's very small, but just gives a little feature on your border. So it's very small little um, bump there. Okay, so we'll do that again. So you can see a few next to each other. So I've done two single crochets in between. So I'm gonna do my next pico of a single crochet, chain three, go back into the first chain. You can go under one or two um, loops, it's up to you. Go into, into the first chain and do a slip stitch. And then I'm going to do two single crochets. Okay, so this is our second pico. Try and get this loop behind out of the way. There we go, there's our second pico. Just little cute bumps. Okay, 
and obviously you could change it to have just one single crochet in between so they are closer together entirely up to you again to finish you want to finish the same way you started so um, I only have one single crochet there but you could start with you want to finish however you started so if you started with one single crochet at the end finish with one single crochet at the end or two or whatever um, and again if you're going doing it that's if you're doing it in a row if you're doing it in the round and finishing um, you're coming round and joining um, you've gone all the way around a blanket or something then you want to make sure you've got the same amount of stitches um, and then slip stitch into your first single crochet okay I'm going to show you this um, as a chain five so you would do exactly the same um, let's get some more yarn so again you want to do this in odd numbers so I'm just going to do a single crochet over that chain space and then a single crochet in the next so single crochet and then chain five and then go into the first chain and do a slip stitch. Oops. Okay, do a slip stitch. And then I'm going to do two single crochets. Okay, and then I'm going to do my single crochet, chain five. And slip stitch into the first chain and then two more single crochets to finish off and here we go you can see they are similar to those those um, second ones we did but they're just a bit bigger but they kind of close um, more than these chain fives here they don't actually close as such they're both um, down here separately where it starts and finishes is um, separate okay there's a gap whereas here they are joined and closed the camera is going to play okay so they are joined and closed at the bottom so there's the chain five and there are the chain threes and get those together there we go okay so obviously as i said you can vary um, how many you do in between um, just make sure that you kind of do it evenly along um, you could just do one one single crochet in between if you prefer um, okay so the other thing you can do is do these style of picots but with a single crochet instead of a slip stitch so I do a single crochet and then just to separate and then I'm going to do a single crochet and then chain five and then a single crochet in the first chain so not a slip stitch but a single crochet okay and then I'm going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch and I'm going to go straight into another picot so I've just got one single crochet in between so single crochet chain five and then into the first chain and do a single crochet and then single crochet into the next stitch okay I'll show you how that looks so it just makes it a little fuller okay show you these picots here it looks a little fuller than it did when we did the slip stitch try and fold that down there there we go so there's the ones that we did the single crochet with and here are the ones that we did the slip stitch with so you can see these ones just look a little fuller than these ones okay so this is entirely up to you how you want to do these you could um, vary you could do um, let's let's just have a little play so you could do um, let's do a single crochet in between and then I'm going to do single crochet chain five and I'm going to slip stitch back into the same stitch 
Oops, slip stitch. Okay, and then a single crochet in between. And then the next stitch, I'm going to do a slip stitch, chain three, and slip stitch back into the same stitch. So I'm doing the pico we did right at the beginning, but I'm changing them up. I'm alternating chain five and chain three. So single crochet in the next stitch, and then slip stitch in the next, chain five and slip stitch back into that same stitch. Single crochet in the next, slip stitch in the next, and now it's chain three, and slip stitch back in that same stitch. Single crochet, slip stitch in the next, chain five slip stitch back in the same stitch and then a single crochet and that gives you this variation where are we we are here so you've got um, a long pico and then a short a long a short and then a long okay so you can totally vary this up however you fancy Okay, you can really just mix and match however you like, whatever look you like, um, and personalise it to your taste. If you see the written pattern in the Facebook group, um, there are lots of photos and ideas there of how you can do your picots, how you can change them up, how you can mix how many stitches you make in between, um, how many chains, whether you slip stitch, whether you single crochet, um, so many variations and um, the only other thing to tell you is when you get to a corner you generally with Pico you just continue in exactly the same way as you have along you just just continue um, going around don't think oh, I need to stop and do something different at the corner just continue um, and that is how we do our Picos so I'm going to zoom in and let you have a look at all these together Actually, I might just finish my row and then I'll zoom in and let you see them all together. And there we go. I've just laid my other piece of fabric behind because the yellow was kind of blending into my wooden table. So um, there you go. Um, there's your ideas for picots. Beautiful, effective and quick. Okay, let's get started on the wave border, which is very simple, um, but looks very effective. Um, so I'm back with my trusty piece of um, fabric that I've made. <laughs> and um, I've just done my first stitch, which um, I've done a single crochet and a chain one. And this is to count as a double crochet. Now this is different to what we've probably done before. Um, there are so many ways you can join your yarn and start your first stitch. Um, I would suggest not to do a chain three because when you're working in a row, especially, um, a chain three can give you a bit of a gap. Um, chain three is sometimes a little taller than a double crochet. So either do chain two, do a standing double crochet, um, or what I've done, which makes it look, when you get the rest of the stitches along, it doesn't sort of shout that it's not the same stitch. I've done a single crochet and then a chain on top, okay? So however you want to do that, join your yarn in your first stitch and then you want to do three more double crochets along your side. So you have four double crochets in total. Okay, and you can see this is not my a traditional granny because I've got four stitches in my row rather than um, three. Okay, so you want four double crochets. Okay, and then you're going to chain four. And for this first wave only, you're going to, we're going to turn our work, and for the first wave only, you're going to join 
into the first stitch with a slip stitch. We do our slip stitch in a different place for our future waves, okay? So you've got this chain four across the top. Go into that chain a little better. And there we go, okay. And then turn your work back around and then you're going to do seven double crochets in this chain space, over this chain. Seven double crochets. Okay, so this is what you have so far. Your four double crochets with seven double crochets sort of domed on top. Okay, and now we're going to start our second wave. So we're going to do four uh, double crochets. I'm just going to skip my um, chain space for this one. So then my um, waves will sit on top of my clusters. So, um, But just continue along um, your work and do four double crochets. Okay, and then you're going to chain four. And this is where it's different from the very first one. And this is how we will do all of them in future. Okay, turn your work. And now you're going to join with a slip stitch between these seven double crochets and these four double crochets of the first one. So if you look, you can see where I'm popping my uh, hook in that gap there okay and then we're going to do a sing uh, sorry a slip stitch in that gap okay and then turn your work back around and you're going to do seven double crochets over this new chain four space There we go. And then straight back down and you're going to do four double crochets. Okay. And then, oops, <laughs> getting caught up with my yarn there. And then chain four. Again, turn your work around and you're going to slip stitch in the space between your seven double crochet and your four double crochet of the previous wave. Slip stitch. Turn your work around and seven double crochets over this chain four space. And this is as simple as it is. And I'll show you how it all looks together in just a second. Oops, last one. Seven. And then to finish this off, you just want to come down and you can come down and do a slip stitch like so or you can just finish with a double crochet or a single crochet. So you could just finish down here with a double crochet. If you're gonna finish with a double crochet, then you ideally want to start with a double crochet. Or if you're going, if you're making, this is if you're doing a row, if you are working in the round, you would join with a slip stitch to your first double crochet here. Okay, you just slip stitch here and that would complete the round. Um, but if you're doing it in a row, you will need to start and finish in the same way. So you can see now how it's starting to form this wave look. It's kind of going sort of, you know, behind itself. So you can see that you've got that texture going on and it's lovely and it's such a simple effect. 
um, sorry, such a great effect for such a simple stitch. Um, love it, love it. So I'm going to do a few more here, just show you how it looks when you've got um, more in a row, and um, then I'll get back to you. And there we go, I've done my um, row of the wave border, and I think it looks really effective how it's just got these, these um, waves up and down beautiful um, and actually the way I've finished off on this end is I have done my seven double crochets and then I just did a slip stitch into the same chain so I did um, yeah my seventh double crochet and then I just did a slip stitch there just to bring it down and finish it off um, so that is the wave border and um, I, I love it such a beautiful effect and even from the back it looks um, nice and effective um, yeah lovely stitch and it's so simple um, but effective just got this other piece behind it so you can see the color um, because I've got this orangey um, yellow wooden table so it doesn't show very well so there you go um, if you are working sorry for that just um, gathering my thoughts <laughs> if you are working this um, border around a corner um, then what you would want to do, let me just grab a granny square here, so this is the one when I showed you the elephant border um, a week ago, um, so if you're using a granny square or any kind of square or anything worked in the round and you've got actual corners then what you would do is you would do your stitches into that chain space, okay, you would just do all of your stitches or however many, depends where you're going, um, and you do them in that chain space um, and your wave will be over this corner okay if you've got a corner where there are stitches um, then use the center stitch uh, middle stitch of that corner and do your stitches into there okay um, just see how it looks when you get to your corner it depends on what type of corner you've got whether it's a chain or stitches but just um, see how it looks when you get to your corner of what you feel you need to do and how it needs to work. Um, if you've got a piece like mine here, when I've got it in rows, um, then, and you're wanting to go all the way around, then you will need to work into the side of stitches. Now I've got double crochets here, so I would probably do um, two stitches into the side of each row. Okay, so do two into the side of each um, to make my four. Um, and when you get to the corner, because they are quite sort of a, an angular corner, um, I would probably um, do two into this and then um, two, then I'd work around. Or you can, um, if I got to here, then I would just continue around my corner and just start the next one straight off. In fact, I'll do one of those now and then I'll get back and show you how that looks just so you can get an idea. So I will undo this slip stitch. And I will just show you how it looks to work around this corner. Okay. So here we go. Here's what we have for going around the corner. Um, so it just continues along really nicely. Um, I didn't actually do two. Well, I did one in between the end of rows um, as well because it was too far apart. As you can see, they're quite far apart. So I've done one in between the end of rows as well. Um, and two into each row. So it just continues around really nicely, it just, just continues. So um, yeah, just see what your work looks like and what you feel will look best. So that is our waves border and I love it. So simple, relatively quick, but beautiful and gives such a nice effect. Um, so that's what we have today. So if you have found this um, tutorial useful and helpful and you've enjoyed crocheting along or watching along with me, um, then I um, hope you'll click that like button and give us a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. Um, and I can't wait to see um, photos in the Facebook group of um, what you've done with this border um, and especially the Picos um, would be great to see those as well. So. Um, all the links and details are in that description box below, um, they're all there. Um, so until next time, just keep hooking and don't let your tea get cold.